I got a feeling this could be the new Sanko. The new rattle trap. You know, the new the new go-to bait for anglers all over the world. It just covers so many of the basics. So versatile, so perfect for every situation. Yes, I'm talking about a six inch baby crocodile lure. They have tails that are about as long as their body is. So I was thinking this might be a good candidate to try to make a glider out of. And I'll keep the tail nice and tall so it can catch lots of water from side to side and turn. And then we might be able to get a nice wide gliding action out of this bait. I might downsize on these back legs. They look a little big in this, what I drew right here. But other than that, this is about what it's going to look like from the top. Right away. I just changed my mind about something. This is gonna be pretty cool, I think, if I can make it work. I'm gonna make soft plastic legs for this crocodile. That just made it a lot more involved, but I think that also improved the bait a lot because if these arms are gonna be able to be flexible, they won't get in the way of the hooks on the bottom, and I think that'll improve the hookup ratio. So it's gonna have a hard body, a joint right here just before the tail with soft plastic arms and legs. I think that'll be thick enough. This is a three-quarter inch stock piece of poplar. That'll work. But just to be safe, I'm gonna use this one inch thick stock piece of poplar. Because I don't need to cut out the legs yet. All I need is the body. You know what? I hate this crap. I've been using this in my videos for a long time now. And it's way too strong for this sort of stuff. I'm gonna go to the store and get some stuff that's made for paper. Ooh, it actually sprays as a mist. That's way better. Baby alligators, they do have a pretty complex shape if you're looking at them from the side. Lots of ups and downs and curves that you gotta follow to make it look real. That's pretty close though. I'm gonna come back and uh, define these lines better with a pen and cut it out. So the crocodile's all roughly blocked out, and I'm gonna start doing some rough carving on it now, just getting it to shape. Looking at pictures the entire time too, that really helps. These are guidelines to follow with the knife. As a pretty accurate reference photo as to what I'm going for, is a lot like that. So not too much spikiness and bumpiness on the back pretty smooth but i do need to maintain that ridge on the tail towards the top i gotta watch where it breaks into two and then the body becomes kind of square i gotta follow that and i'm gonna kind of stay away from the head i want to leave as much material up here as i can and give myself a lot to carve with because it gets pretty detailed
There. A little bit more shape to it. So I'm getting a little further along with uh, some of the main details. I've got the shape of the head pretty accurate. Once I get this smooth and I get some of these main carvings done, like where the mouth's going to be and where the eye is, I'll probably smooth this all out with sandpaper and then get, uh, and then actually get to some uh, more complicated details. So crocodiles, they got this kind of checkered pattern on their back. And when it comes to the finer scale skin details on this bait, that's where I'm starting. So it's more just square checkering pattern along the body here. It goes from really small square checkers to a little bit larger towards the back. And then for the belly, it's just straight lines across like this and on the tail all the way up to the top. I'm going to follow these checkers and bring them all the way down to the bottom. So quite a bit of fine carving to do, but I'll just sit here and get it done. We're getting there. All I really have left to do is to get this body part carved on both sides. I got the belly, the tail, the head. Then once I'm done carving all of the details into it, just come back with a finer knife and get it looking exactly how I want it and then I can sand it too and get it really smooth. Quite a bit more to do, but that's where I'm at. So I drew out every little square for this alligator skin on its sides. And I could go in with a knife and try to carve each one of those really finely, but I changed my mind. I'm just gonna glue some of this really fine mesh onto its sides. That'll be a lot easier. So I'm gonna line this up nicely, nice and square. I'm gonna put a dot of super glue right there, and that's where I'm gonna start the connection. And if I need it, I got an accelerator on standby. So everywhere that you see the check ring is where I got to lay this mesh over and I got to cut off everything else and cut it to the right shape and everything. So before I just start cutting, I'm going to start super gluing all this mesh 
starting from here, working my way down, and then I'll cut it. I've tried to just use spray adhesive for this, thinking that getting more coverage and everything would be a lot easier, but that just never works out for me. This is the only technique that I found that works, is just super glue your way along slowly. I needed the little segments in this skin to be really small compared to the top here, because usually this part, these bumps are a lot bigger than the bumps on the side of an alligator. So now that this mesh isn't going anywhere, I'm just starting to cut out the shape that it needs to be. Need some smaller scissors for this. So now this is all cut out to how I want it. I can just start applying glue and I don't have to worry about getting it where I don't want it. because there's no chance of me gluing mesh to a spot where it doesn't belong. Can't really see it because I drew all of that checkering on the side, but there is tiny little bumps. That's the effect that this stuff gives, is just more like tiny bumps. But they're nice and symmetrical and even, and I didn't have to spend hours carving them. By the way, I think this stuff was like wedding veil mesh, like what the brides put over their face. So I'm making a decision for this bait that I should have made uh, while I was at the bandsaw cutting it out, but I'm making it now, so here we go. I'm gonna cut a lip slot into it, and this is gonna be a, a two-piece lipped baby alligator bait. So this needs to be perfectly perpendicular. Oh, and this is just going to be a shoulder, what I'm cutting out right here. I'm actually going to go in deeper with a Dremel, and the lip's going to narrow where it inserts, and then you won't be able to see a big slot. So this is about as far as I'm going to go for the shoulders. So now I'm gonna use a burr bit, and I'm gonna go even deeper, but I'm gonna stay away from the sides. There's the shape of the lip that I'm going to cut out for this bait, and that's the little tab that's going to get inserted into the head of this bait so the lip is secure. That's how the lip is going to fit in, but I got some more material to remove inside of that slot. I'm going to do that now. Okay, that did it. It's nice and flush now. Nice and even, too. That's going to be good. So I've got everything carved out. I got the lip slot cut, I got the lip made. I got all the carving smoothed out to how I want it. Last thing to do before I seal this wood, two things. I gotta drill the lead hole and then I gotta cut the joint. So since this bait's gonna float and it's gonna be a crank down style bait, I'm just gonna put one uh, 3 8 inch wide chunk of lead right in the middle of the belly. Pretty much right in the middle of what the first segment's gonna be. I'm gonna fill that up with lead right now. While the lead's heating up, I think I'm just gonna cut the joint right where the, the black lines end. Right there is where the joint's gonna be. I'm still undecided on what kind of joint I wanna make for this bait, but I'm just gonna cut it, we'll see. There, the joint's cut. Uh, while the lead's heating up, I'm gonna think about what kind of joint I want. Probably a slot joint. I'll put slots in the front piece 
and a screw eyes in this piece and then a pen down the middle, probably. So those slots are done. That joint's ready to go. Just need to drill the two screw eyes into this piece and then just pin those in. So this is some five minute epoxy mixed with some glass microspheres. I'm gonna have to go back and recarve these lines on the belly where the lead is. It's good to mix some glass microspheres in there so it makes it a little bit more carvable instead of just being like glass hard epoxy. Excuse me, Chip. Okay. Oh boy. Wanna move? Chip. Really? So the body of the alligator is finished carving. All I got to do to this is uh, go dip it in some wood sealer, some polyurethane, paint it and clear coat it and it's done. So now I got to get to work on the arms and legs and those are going to be soft plastic. There's the arms and the legs. I'm gonna cut those out on the bandsaw. I kind of angled them forward so the structure of the arms kind of go with the wood grain. So they're gonna be easier to carve that way too. In order to get these legs attached to the body and so that they kind of attached to the body seamlessly. I'm gonna use a twist lock kind of design and I'll uh, pin them to the body that way and twist them on. Where they attach to the body, I'm hollowing out uh, an indent so that the twist lock will grab and as I twist it on, it'll push tighter and tighter to the body and then the soft plastic will kind of smush to the body is what I'm hoping because there's a cavity right there and then on the outsides, um, they'll connect. I hope that makes sense. If not, you'll see what I mean a little later. So I'm not adding any uh, detailed texture to these legs. They're just gonna be smooth and plain like this and I'm gonna dip them in the polyurethane and they'll be ready to mold after that. I think what I'm gonna do to add detail to them is just put some black flake in the soft plastic when I'm molding it. And I think that'll give it the effect of kind of like alligator skin. So I already have this crocodile painted white and that's pretty close to what the base color for this bait is actually gonna be and show through when the paint scheme's done. All I have to do is add a lot of uh, 
It's a very dark, dark green, almost black green. There's a quite a bit more detail on the head to do with that color, but the body of the bait is just a bunch of black stripes and an off-white that shows through. So after looking at more pictures, it looks like the dark color is just flat black, no green in it. That was just kind of a guess. So I'm just going with black and I'm gonna draw or paint all of the stripes on it right now. There it is. There's all the head detail and then all the stripe patterns. So all of the pattern details done now. Uh, I just need to spray over that detail with some colors, some fadings. I might come back in to the mouth with some very thin black to try to outline the teeth, but just about done painting. It's looking great. I mixed up this color. It's like a dark peach. I think it's going to go good on the top of this alligator. So the last color that I'm going to airbrush onto this alligator, I'm going to put a bunch of pearlized white in here. And I'm just going to do one drop of yellow. And then go over the whole thing really lightly. Except the belly and kind of up by the mouth and the neck. I'm gonna keep that white. Just to make it kind of an off-white. Not sure if you can pick up any of the yellow, but it did the job. It looks right. Now for the eyes, I'm using that same uh, pearl white and yellow, but I added a little bit of gold and some water to thin it down a little bit, make it a little bit more translucent. And I'm gonna really, I'm gonna kind of be careful and not get it into the pupil that I already made. I don't know, it might be fine if I do. But... All right, that looks pretty good. The body of this baby alligator, it's all clear coated, it's done. 
It just needs to set and harden and it'll be ready to go. The last thing I gotta do, I need to move on to molding the arms and the legs now. And those are ready to go. I just need to make the mold box for them and pour the mold. So here's the legs. I'm just gonna put them all together in one mold. So I'm just gonna super glue these to the flat surface here and that'll be the box. And I'll just pour the silicone in there. That makes for a seal around the box so the silicone won't leak out from the bottom. I think five ounces was a bit much. Oh well. I always do that. So tomorrow, I'll mold some legs, uh, install the twist wire locks where all the four legs will go on the crocodile, or alligator. Sorry if I've said crocodile while making this lure. I might have. It's an alligator, baby alligator. Um, so I'll mold the legs, I'll install the legs, I'll put the bait together, and it'll be ready to fish. Be interesting to see what this bait looks like when it's done. I hope I can get the arms really flush to the body to where there's no gaps. Okay, see you tomorrow. For the soft plastic legs, I'm just going to add some white pearl powder and then some uh, black flakes. Give it the, the white and the black contrast. Try to match this body as best I can. Add the flake now. I'm going to want quite a bit. One more heat up and I think I'll be ready to pour it. So I just twisted a little twist lock wire into this leg. That's what I'm doing for all of them. Here's the front arms. It worked out pretty good. They're sitting pretty flush against the body. You can definitely tell they're different and soft plastic, but that's okay. That's as close as I could get them to matching the body with what I got. That was a pretty complicated bait to get together, but there it is, all finished, ready to fish. Hope it swims good. <laughs> we'll see. A bluegill. Oh really? On the oh. dragonfly? Yeah. Something bit his fin off. Aww. You see his fin? Oh my god. It's gone. Nice job. Ooh. Pretty good. <laughs> bluegill on the dragonfly. <laughs> That's kind of funny. 
Maybe they're... I can get a bluegill on the alligator. Yeah, they're kind of feisty, so. That'd be crazy. Yeah, the legs flap really hard. Yeah. When you retrieve, the legs are just like. <laughs> We're going to a new spot. I wasn't feeling that one. Chelsea caught a bluegill on the dragonfly. But uh, it rained really hard yesterday, so we're trying to figure out a spot that would be good where the waters aren't all muddy. Great. I snagged it. Walk to the other side. I can't get it off. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. Mm -mm. I think I can cross right here though. You're gonna cross? It looks shallow the whole way over. It's like a raging river. Oh God. I don't think this is a good idea. Is your phone in your pocket? I think it stays this deep. Your pants are getting wet. What? Your pants are getting wet. Oh, it gets deep right there. Let's come I'll back. Come back. I can't watch this. What'd you say? I said I had to check. You had to? Yeah, your pants are wet. Are you saying things? I'm gonna go down there. I think I'm gonna rip the legs off of this. Might have a better action now. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> it wobbles now. Oh, and it comes in really nice. See it? <laughs> yeah. This will catch something. Now that you ripped his legs off. <laughs> you see it? Yeah, that works way better. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea. I'm about to call it. Really? Wow. What do you think? You're giving up. Ooh. I just threw my lure at a rock. I think we should go to one more spot. What? Yes. We can't give up yet. What spot? I don't know. There is no spot. <laughs> Let's go to oh, our wedding spot. <laughs> Let's do it. I bet there's fish there. That's our last effort for today. Uh, fine. <laughs> Got it? Yep. Well, weirdly enough, the alligator didn't catch anything. Who was expecting that? Not me. You know, I thought this was going to be the next big bait. We fished the lake, the river, and then a different spot. So we fished three spots, didn't catch anything. Chelsea caught a bluegill on the dragonfly, but uh, that's it. I have nothing else to say. On to the next bait.